Well, Simon Wilson, the new director of football at Stockport County, welcome to Edgley Park. Thank it's been a, a few weeks for you now. Why were you so keen to join Stockport County? I mean, I think um, through my career, the things that have really got me going and made me want to jump out of bed in the morning is the teams that can grow and the teams that have got sort of untapped potential. And um, I was introduced to Mark Stott about seven or eight months ago and um, learned a little bit about what he was trying to do. Um, and when he told me about the project, I just thought it was solid gold in terms of, um, from him uh, as, a, as an opportunity point of view, but you know, straight away it's super exciting for anyone that's involved because um, there's a lot of football clubs that have to work really hard just to stay where they are. And I think we've got an amazing opportunity to take this club on a real journey and, and take it through the leagues. And you know, look at the history of the, of the club. 115 odd years of, of existence you know, something like 105 of those have been in the league so it's a league club it's had a hard time and um, you'd hope that the only way is up from this moment in time there's a lot of hard work to do to do that there's no guarantees um, but um, but we've certainly got the possibility and, and what an exciting opportunity the director of football is a new position for Stockport County what does it entail? Well, the director of football um, at any club, really, you've always got a balance, a really delicate balance at any football club of, of the sort of the short term and the long term. Um, so we know you don't really get to the long term unless you look after the short term. And, and the short term is really, in this case, Jim Gannon's job, you know, the head coach's job. And you want their energy and their time focused on the absolute details, because it often comes down to details, of what wins on a Saturday. But in the meantime, um, you know, and, and Stockport fans will, will identify with this more than anybody else, I'm sure, is that somebody needs to make sure that the club's sustainable. So someone needs to make sure that the club is continually growing. Um, and when you think about a football club, you know, there's, there's really two things that a club does. The club is, is, you know, it plays football matches and then it tries to, you know, it's, a, it's an entertainment brand as well. So, you know, the way that Mark looked at this straight, straight from the off was that we need someone looking after the, the entertainment and the fans and the, you know, the community and the custodianship of the club in that way. And then we need someone looking after the football side of things. Um, and so I was lucky enough to, to get into that conversation with, with Mark and, um, and, and yeah, here I am. Sure. So many, many years ago, I played as a young player um, at Peterborough United. Um, we had a good youth team. Um, in that youth team was people like Matthew Etherington, who went on and had a good career. Simon Davies, who went on and had a good career. But um, Michael Edwards, who's now the sporting director at Liverpool. Um, and our coach was Paul Ashworth, Dan Ashworth's brother, who's obviously been the technical director of the FA. So we had a lot of... Um, it was a big influence on me, that team, because, you know, we were a team that... Um, or a club that, 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 that shouldn't be producing good young players and coaches and staff, but has ended up having a massive impact in terms of people that have gone on and done really well in the game. Mm. And that's always been my sort of outlook. And um, I've, I've managed to go and find clubs uh, that have always had big opportunities to go and get better, so or organisations. And so the, the, I guess my first thing outside of playing football was working for a match analysis company called Prozone. So back in 2002, this company sort of set up in, in, in Leeds um, as just uh, you know three three people and a computer type thing, but it ended up being sort of industry recognised yeah. and right across the game in terms of the company that sort of introduced analysis into English football, and I, I managed to get in at the start there, and that took me to initially Preston North End where I worked with David Moyes. I then when David left to go to Everton, I left to go to Southampton um, for four or five years there. Um, a great time there with a club that was pretty like the club that it is now really producing young players being innovative yeah. trying to punch above its weight um, and then in 2006 I, um, I joined Manchester City so sort of two years before the uh, uh, Sheikh Mansour's investment into the club um, you know a very earthy kind of real football club in terms of you know, very passionate fans um, big club but, um, but probably underperforming for its size at the time and then when the investment came in from, from Sheikh Mansour, obviously went on a hell of a journey there. And um, for, for five years I worked for Manchester City in terms of you know, improving all of the areas of, uh, of their infrastructure, staffing, recruitment, um, academy, training ground and that kind of stuff. Um, and then in 2013 when the new CEO, Ferran Soriano, came in from Barcelona, um, who had a different vision in terms of taking the city brand internationally and setting up clubs in New York, uh, Melbourne, um, partnerships with Japanese club Yokohama F Mariners. Um, and it was myself and uh, my boss, uh, a guy called Brian Marwood, who uh, who went and set those clubs up, sort of taking the 
the methodology and the, the knowledge that we had from, from the years with Manchester and taking it out to the other parts of the world. Um, then in 2017, I got an opportunity um, to go and work with David Moyes again up at Sunderland. Um, it was a tough, uh, it was a tough club, a tough situation for, for both of us at the time. Um, obviously, it's well documented what uh, the challenges that, Su that Sunderland have faced as a football club. Um, but again, another huge club with potential, and I think that's been the thing that that I've always looked for in the types of roles that I've done is 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 can can that club get better, and can I are there, are the things I can do to help them get better. Um, so when this came around, um, you know, I, I, I strongly felt that um, it was something that excited me first and foremost. I mean, I live locally; it's it's um, you know, it's, it's it's a club and a town that I'm always um, it's always close to me. Um, but I also felt like there was experiences that I had that I could probably help um, with the club to, to take on this journey. I mean, probably the most public facing bit of your role is recruitment. Um, there's been quite a lot of it since you arrived already. How pleased are you with the recruitment that's well, the, happened? Yeah, I think, I think um, you're right. Recruitment is a huge part of, of, of the role and what people understand as the director of football or sporting director type role now. I mean, we've got a much more close attention to transfers it's become an entertainment business in itself you know the whole sort of deadline day thing and so forth but it, it, it the whole thing is about improving the level of the team improving the level of the team can be done in two ways you, you can either coach the team to be better and evolve it or you need to bring other players in and the first thing I've got to say is that you know the group of players that that we found here mm. who have come through being the champions of national uh, north and have, and have got the club to a fantastic position to give it the possibility to be bought and be taken on another journey is that you know, that's the first group of people that need to be recognised. And then from there you look at the team and say, well, where are, where are the areas where we can strengthen, where are some of the areas where perhaps we don't have um, um, as much power as some of the other teams that we need to, to go past. Um, and that's where you start to look into the market and look at, at opportunities to sign players. So um, that's what we've done. Um, Firstly, what I've found is when we've been into the market talking to players is that the name Stockport carries a lot. And the minute you start to say, you know, from Stockport County, there's a lot of good feeling for the club that's been built up over the course of the years. So I ride off the, off the benefit of other people's work in that way. Um, and we've got people that want to come to the club. And it was really important to, to us, to myself and Jim, um, that we got the right characters that come through the door because we need people that respect the dressing room and the, and the, and the, and the group that have got us to, uh, to the position that we're in today and are humble enough to take that on and try and enhance it. So whether it's Liam or whether it's Lois, um, you know, these are groups of people that are good characters that will add value on the pitch but also off the pitch as well. Somebody cynical might say Mark Stott's investment, lots and lots of money, mm. it's a guarantee of success on the pitch, isn't it? How would you respond to that? No, I mean, I think we've, we've all got um, enough you know, stories from the clubs we support or the clubs that we know that there isn't a guarantee between success um, and money. Um, there's, there's lots of clubs that make poor investments, um, which ultimately... You know, can, can can really really hurt the club long term. So it can be a blessing and a curse. Um, you need it for sure. I think you need you absolutely need the money, but then you need to have the ideas of how to spend it, and then you need to have the competence to to to, to work with the talent once it comes in. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that um, and, and and Mark's very very uh, clear that this well, this won't be you know there's no fun in just buying it in you know and 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 and, and um, it's it's everybody else's work is that you know we want this group of people this group of staff um, to kind of earn it uh, in a way he'll help with tools and things that we need um, if, if 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 there are things out there that we think we can use to get better um, but this gets done on hard work really you can't there's no button you press and it automatically happens I mean especially in this league you know it's one automatic place to go up four go down you know you've got kind of double the chance of being relegated at the start of the season then you've got going up um, so you know and there's been plenty of teams that have spent a lot of money in this division and, and got it wrong um, so we, we'll be very very careful about that we're lucky to have access to some resource but we've got to make strong and wise choices and, and Mark will scrutinise those as well um, and uh, 
you know, the, the thing is, the other thing is, well, I'm sure we'll talk about Jim a little bit, is when you're working with someone like Jim, Jim's always going to make the best value type decisions for the, for the long term nature of the club. That's something he's always done. I don't think he, he could not do that. Yeah. Um, so, um, so um, you know, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll, we'll use the, the resource that we've got wisely. It, obviously, the relationship between you and Mark is a, is a key one, but the other key one is that relationship with Jim Gannon. And, and he has worked with directors of football in the past mm. at other clubs. How have you found these, these early weeks? How are you getting on? Yeah, yeah, I think um, it's two people that love football in a room talking football. I mean, it's like, could be better. It's both our, you know, we're both delighted and our meetings tend to overrun yeah. by an hour or two hours and our, you know, our families are, are frustrated with us about that. Um, but um, but no, ultimately, I've been. I didn't know Jim before we came in in here, and, and um, uh, I knew about his history with the club and his special relationship with the club, um, and um, and the results that he's got whilst whilst he's been at the club, both in terms of results on the pitch, but also the you know the the the, 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 the development of young players. Yeah. Um, and in within five seconds of me, you know, I under, sort of understood why because he's a man that can go into the the extra layers of detail that only a few can do um, in terms of the knowledge of the game. So, you know, I, you know, I, 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 I've really enjoyed our time together at this moment in time. We've only been doing it a short while. We've got a lot more to come. And, uh, you know, I think we, we've got to get a situation where, you know, I can use the experiences I've got, he can use the experiences together and we can plus those together to make something, you know, that's really, really helpful and, 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 and unique for the club. Um, I, I know everybody starts to look at the the minute you get a director of football around a manager, and people start to get sceptical of well, who's the real boss and you know what's the what's the how are they getting on and start to build a soap opera out of it. But <laughs> you know, there's there's just no time for that really. Yeah. You know, it's about there's things that Jim will do. That, uh, sorry, there's things that I I will be able to do now that will allow Jim to free up his time and energy to focus on the thing that he does outstandingly well which is coach teams develop players there's things that um, hopefully um, uh, I, I can do that I can bring some of the experiences and, and the qualities that I've got to the club that allow us to do things in a, in a way that Jim perhaps wouldn't be able to, to, to have the time uh, to do so um, so hopefully the two of us come together and we make something stronger for the club um, and if we're not doing that then um, then you know it's, we're, we're both accountable for that. We're here to make the, the club and the team better, um, and, and that's what we'll do. And just a final one from me, Simon. Today, I, I'm interested in what success will look like. How how do you think it will look? What how, how will you know you've, you've, you've achieved your goals? Yeah. Well, I think first and foremost, football is a football is a random game that you know you can you you can you can buy great players. You can buy bait coaches, you can bring directors of football, so there's no guarantees of success. And I think what we've got to try and do, first and foremost, we've got a responsibility for the fans, is that they see a club and a team that represents them. A team that works as hard as they do, a team that um, is, 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 is brave as, as, as people need to be. Um, has got, you know, a little bit of flair, a little bit of magic, you know, for those... For those um, those times and I think Stockport teams over the years have tended to have those types of qualities so the first thing we've got to do is make sure that, that the team that the, the supporters come and watch is a team that represents them and then after that you know we we absolutely have just have to maximize the the abilities and the potential of the of, of the of the players that we've got in the building um, if we do that if we're playing a team that that represents the supporters so the supporters want to come watch the team um, if we've got a team that, are, that we're able to maximise their, their abilities for what we do on the training ground through the week and I think those two things come together can create something really special here and I don't want to put a limit on it mm. we're absolutely desperate to take the team back into the league once we're in the league we're desperate to take it to the next division and, and so on and so on and so on it's about being as good as we can be um, at every level of football um, that we play um, but um, you know so we're just having a conversation indoors there is you know the first thing that people say to you when you say stop but oh, should be a league club yeah. <laughs> we've got to be a league club yeah. we've got to do the work yeah. you know it's about the work there's no should be or you know there's no sentiment in that no one's going to give it to you mm. just because you've had it before so it's about the work day in day out and um, you know hopefully um, myself Mark Stott Jim 
the rest of the team that are here um, we'll be able to all add our individual play our individual part in that um, and we'll be there sooner rather than later Simon exciting times thank you for your time today thank you